my beautiful Cancerian friends, welcome to 2020. This is your January horoscope and I am so pumped to walk with you this month. Now, Cancer, it doesn't happen very often that you are my absolutely just straight to it, clear information um, video that is typically very short when that happens, but your message this month was absolutely clear. And as I close my eyes, Cancer, and I just see this month for you, I just... I want to wrap you in warmth and love and safety and truth this month because that is the feeling that I keep and continue to be shown, especially as I've gone over this forecast a couple times. So just before we jump in, there is still time for you to sign up for the Astrology Hub free forecast marathon that's coming up January 9th through the 12th. 12 different astrologers will all be talking about 2020 how you can use it, how you'll be able to use it next to what I'm sharing with you, how you'll be able to use this Uranian energy coming out of retrograde in your 11th house to get to the proper groupings and support and expansion that you need for 2020 to just make this a delicious year for yourself. So if you'd like to sign up, and I would like you to sign up, please do so in the description box down below. There's no money involved, so just click, show up, learn with us, join with us, and get your cup filled a little bit, okay? All right, Cancer. Oh man, this month is a big month. Um, not, not only because we've got rare planetary alignments, but because this is the month at the very beginning of 2020 that just the guiding energy for your year, I think, is shining through. Now we're gonna have an eclipse that's happening in your sign. We've got everybody and their sister still over in Capricorn energy, which is across the street for you. So relationships are on, on the docket for the year and certainly for the month. We're also gonna have Saturn and Pluto coming together, creating this evolutionary process that I know for so many Cancerians, like the business of relationships over this last couple years has been some work, has been some giving up, has been some throwing your hands in the air, has been delicious. It's just been a lot of things. And this year, I think, brings something a little bit of extra crispy different to the table that is all for your benefit. Okay, Let's jump in and talk about this bad boy. So first and foremost, at the beginning of the month on the second, we've got Jupiter and Mercury who are both in the energy of Capricorn. They are in conjunction as we come into the beginning of this month in your seventh house. So what this is telling me is there will be conversation. There will be wisdom brought to your table in relationships, right? And these are not just, you know, casual hangout kind of relationships. These are significant relationships in your life. What have they meant to you? How have they impacted your life? If you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been single so long and it's actually making me a little bit sad, right? If that's the space that you're in, these two energies together are giving you the wisdom of new ideas, the wisdom of new information, the wisdom of new structure and some maturity comes in here as well. One of the ideas I get with this Mercury Jupiter that I just see when I close my eyes is cancer whatever you want this area of your life to be, you're going to have to be a little bit different this year. The actions are going to have to look different, but you're going to have help with this Uranian energy to see how to do it different if you want a different experience here as well. These are giving you some big ideas in current relationships. They may help you take these things to the next level, but it is based out of wisdom. And wisdom has only come to you, Cancer, because you've experienced, you've already experienced what you've experienced. So I want you to think back through 2018, 2019. What have you experienced with yourself in your own growth and you've had this node here so you've been developing and your relationships where have you had to let go of people right these are the ideas you'll be tackling as we come into the beginning of the month now on january 3rd mars is going to leave the energy his home zone of scorpio and move into the energy of sagittarius this is going to light up your sixth house zone now why i care why i want you to care is because the sixth house zone is your daily routines these are the things you're thinking your behaviors that you're doing on your daily schedule right this is also your daily mental conversation cancer what are you talking to yourself about what are you saying to yourself up there what are the beliefs that you have Sagittarius is about your beliefs right so with Mars here he's action he's energy he's movement he's a little bit of conflict so in your daily routine especially based out of your ideas around relationships you may be needing to take some different actions maybe this area maybe work 
maybe just your whole daily situation, your health, your mental wellness has needed a little zhuzh up, right? Like a little something, something to add it to the table. Mars is going to bring the action and the energy here. And he's also going to make you quite open minded because Mars does have to act like Sagittarius while he's visiting this sign. So this is an opportunity to meet different people, discover different ideas. This is, um, an energy that may bring uh, help to work through any kind of maybe disagreements or something that feels stuck in this area, Mars is going to help you. Now, stay with me. Remember that Mars is going to be here until February. Keep that in your mind as we track on here. On the 8th, Jupiter is going to come into conjunction with this south node. And I want you to pay attention to the 8th because it's an important day. You know, we get closer to moving through 2020, the moons, the all of this stuff, and we want to plant these seeds of intention, right? Make your plan. What do you want? What's the thing you want going forward? But Jupiter coming into connection with this south node is saying, Cancer, what has been going on in our past? What are our past default behaviors, beliefs, attitudes around relationships? You know, where have we needed people more than they needed us? Where have we given more? Where have we taken more than our fair share? Where does this need an adjustment and a balance? Jupiter is coming in with that wisdom, but it's the wisdom to help you look at what has been in the past. It is karmic, right? Where is that relationship from the past that has been over for a really long time and you're still stuck in it. And this can be the relationship with your parents, your family, that requited love, the children. Maybe you've had a death recently in your life and you're still just kind of mulling there. So I want you to know that as Jupiter shows up here, it's going to show you the wisdom of the detachment that is necessary from that south node energy. Now, what this is not a great day for on the 8th is making all these plans for moving forward. It's much more of a reflective kind of time, okay? As we get to the 10th, we're going to have this lunar eclipse happening in your sign at 20 degrees. Okay, it's in your sign. You are going to be getting different. The next six months are a different kind of Cancerian coming to the table, right? Because a lot of things have happened through 2019. You have shed some relationships, whether you chose to shed them, whether it was people's time to transition out or to transition on, whatever the situations, parents, children, business partners, romantic partners, old lovers, ideas of lovers, whatever it is in your relationships in 2019, you did some shedding, which naturally means that you got different. And now that the shedding is done, how are you going to live? right? How are you going to live? Cancer, who are you? Right? So this lunar eclipse says you need to end something. You need to acknowledge something or there's an adjustment that needs to be made and the adjustment is to you and this means you get to be seen. This is first house. We want to see you. What do people get to see you and know you for in, in this time coming forward? Right? Cancer, um, you know, is this a space where, where, where maybe you haven't been as available to the people around you as you'd like to be? Is this the place where maybe even things have shifted at work or in your significant relationships and you're ready to stand tall in a different kind of energy? Whatever it is, Cancer, for the next six months, your development having shed relationships that can no longer travel forward with you is critical to seeing your beautiful self develop and shine out here. And I absolutely love that for you. Now on the 11th, we've got two things happening that are significant. First of all, Uranus, who is up here in the Tauran energy, which you're very comfortable with Taurus energy typically, it's going to come out of retrograde. Now he's been retrograde since August of 2019. Okay. So it's, it's been some time he's, he's been in retrograde. He's been helping you look over your past. He's been breaking down barriers saying we don't need that anymore. Or let's, let's innovate this. Where can we take a more brilliant look at this? Maybe where do we need to elevate this? So as Uranus comes out of retrograde, he's giving us the wisdom to see and to understand what do we need to change and what do we need to let go of and what do we need to keep here, right? There are some things that are significant. So one of the things I would tell you to consider on the 11th and moving forward is because this is your 11th house zone, right? Friends, organizations, social structures, um, groupings, any place where you're grouping, even things in social media, just think grouping. Where are some of these groupings actually quite significant to your success moving forward, right? You know, Cancer, is this a grief group? You know, to have you recently lost someone and maybe where you need to connect, the wisdom is I need to connect with people who are grieving. Is this a travel group where you're like, yes, I am ready to see the world differently, regardless of what 
what is happening in my relationship because remember significant new relationships are also coming in but they need to be the right kind and you'll probably find them socially so as Uranus is direct and out of retrograde here allow this new value different to carry into these relationships with you the other thing I do want to point out to you is because this is Taurus energy if you do have connection or past connection with heavy Taurus energy, this is gonna give you new eyes on it. Is it still valuable in your life and in your world, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. The other thing that's gonna happen on the 11th is Saturn and Pluto are gonna be in conjunction with each other at 22 degrees of Capricorn. Now it'll happen on the 11th or the 12th, just depending on where you live. Now the significance of this to you is important because as Saturn and Pluto come together, they're kind of this slow evolutionary change and process that unfolds, but it shows us where we need to die off so that we can live as something else. It's our Phoenix moment with Pluto. And then Saturn is taking us up, but they're doing it at the same time. So it's like, woo, tiny right like it is tense so what it can feel like is loss here so I want to tell you I want to tell you ahead of time for some of you in your astrology this is going to be like saving grace you're going to be like oh this is butter thank you so much universe for the Saturn Pluto conjunction it is really going to light things up for you and for many it's going to feel like loss and it has to feel like loss because you need to see where you've got to adjust now remember the universe never leaves a vacuum and the universe is not unkind either we just sometimes don't respond to what we're given right so as this comes here I think you can expect to see um a business or just a personal significant relationship in your life um, needing to take a significant change right it will need a very significant change and it will likely begin to be based out of this idea over here that cancer you get to stand up pull those shoulders back be seen have a voice say this is how I would like it this is my way right and at the same time you get to present yourself in these relationships as a cancerian of grace of integrity of empowerment it is a beautiful beautiful energy but this will certainly create that now because this this creates this sense of hole here for a very short time you will fill it from your 11th house this is the house that will bring you healing but you have to take cancer to these groupings to the information to the forward motion okay so one of the things I do want to point out here before I give you the rest of the dates of the month is this can come in just a variety of different ways right cancer truly if you have recently had a loss, if you have recently shed someone, if you've recently gained a relationship, whatever it is, all of these things will impact you by also putting a shift in your daily routine, which Mars is helping you with. Mars will say, we've got to deal with this. We've got to get some new ideas. Even if it's the happiest Cancerian relationship you've ever been in in your life, Mars is going to say, let's play. Let's get some new ideas. What else can we do here? Let's revive this bad boy. Take it on a trip maybe, right? Whatever it is, you have support to make these adjustments so that cancer is showing up full force, okay? All right, when we get to the 13th of the month, Venus is hightailing it out of the energy of Aquarius, moving into the energy of Pisces. So of course, going to be lighting up your ninth house space. This is a place of beautiful expansion. There could be some travel coming on the agenda for you, but this is also an energy of faith. Cancer, if you think you have neatly avoided the uh, topic of faith, certainly not. Faith is gonna play a big part in how you're gonna muster through and decide what to do with these relationships moving forward. And it'll also be what allows you to let new people in. Now, one of the things I do keep getting a vision of is trees, maybe a forest or something like that. So it indicates to me that maybe there's travel. You're doing some different kind of travel or relating or you're someplace foreign or something like that. So Venus is gonna make you very, very magnetic for these opportunities here. Venus also traveling with Neptune at the end of the month is going to allow for some forgiveness, right? Um, in terms of money and business, I do love Venus in the ninth house because it makes you magnetic in your expansion. People are seeing you, they're hearing what you have to say, they are loving what you're saying, they're like, ooh, cancer, tell me more. You know, so it's a very, very good omen over there to help you in that area as well. As we get to the 16th, we see some extra crispy good movements. So first and foremost, Mercury is going to move on into the energy of Aquarius. Then just shortly after that, we're going to have the Sun moving over here into the energy of Aquarius. And right behind that, we're going to have the new moon, okay? 
So then we see this eighth house being lit up brilliantly, and this is the house of intimacy. It's sex, it's joint connections, any kind of joint resources that you have together with another human being or a sponsorship or fear or loss that maybe you're dealing with, whatever that particular energy is, you get the opportunity to say, this is what I want it to be. This is how I would like it to look. Mercury is gonna bring information, communications. It may be very, very busy. It's the beginning of the year slash end of 2019. So maybe this is paperwork, taxes, insurance. If you got a divorce, you might have to do that paperwork. If you got married, you have to do that paperwork. Um, for some people, I'm telling you, if you've been dealing with any kind of death or shedding, you may be needing to do that kind of paperwork and stuff happening here. But at this new moon, you want to plant those seeds of intention here on the 24th for what you'd like this area to be moving forward. It's intimate. Um, if you're willing to shed what you have known relationships and life to be like for this next thing that is absolutely available to you, I think it's abundantly able for you to have it. But you've got to plant those seeds of intention and be willing to move yourself in a little bit of a different way as we're here in January 2020. Now two days I want to give you before we end this video, the 27th and the 28th. 27th, Venus and Neptune are traveling together beautifully up here in the ninth house, but they are traveling together. I love the Bopsy twins. They're happy. They are, Life is blissful up here. Just forgiveness for all. You know, you just have all of these spiritual, um, intuitive pieces of information that help you make decisions and guide you with the rest of these things. Spiritual literature. Yes, honey. Right? Like, I love all of that. But it's also too blissful. It can be a fog area. So I want you to be mindful that it is not the best decision, the best place to make really big decisions if you are traveling let's say that you are involved in something that has to do with work or the government or something like that be sure you have all of those details it's a very in between the worlds kind of day so you want to make sure you have all your facts now on the 28th mars here in sagittarius is going to square this neptune right so it's going to be your sixth house taking on your ninth house something about your daily routine and your beliefs something about a, a scan a perfectly planned trip it, there's it's foggy there's a miscommunication there's something happening here that kind of creates a little bit of tension now squares ask for our attention they demand action so typically what's going to happen is you're going to have to take some action somewhere in between there now mars taking on neptune is like running in water right it's like you're not getting very far but you're certainly getting that heart rate up so maybe don't run just do a jog so you can figure out what neptune's also trying to point you to as well okay all right, you guys, I think it's going to be a good month straight to the point. If there are relationships, if your participation in relationships has not been something that you have thoroughly enjoyed or you've been worried about it or you felt sad or you're dealing with loss or you are just the happiest cancer out there, your availability and your abundance around relationships begins right here in January. And these sources are going to show you how to connect with people and resources and move just a little bit different so that you can really have the fulfillment that's available for you here. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you at the free forecast marathon coming up January 9th. And I love you way too much, okay? Bye, Cancers.